So just this week, we already learned that Mike Bloomberg last year, late last year, mind you, donated more than $300,000 to the DNC. And now they're changing the rules in a way that specifically benefits him and allows him to participate in the next Democratic debate. And now we have another story that demonstrates this conflict of interest between him and the DNC. And all indications tell us that he is 2020's Hillary Clinton because the DNC is unquestionably in the tank for Mike Bloomberg. And if you're wondering why, it's because he is really, really rich. And if there's anything that the DNC needs at this point in time, it's money. So what's the new scandal involving Mike Bloomberg that the media will almost certainly ignore? Well, as Sludge reports, as the Democratic National Committee establishes procedures for the Democratic presidential nominating process, two members of the DNC Rules Committee simultaneously work on the campaign of former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Having surrogates on the Democratic National Convention's Rules Committee and the Standing Rules and Bylaws Committee could be a boon for Bloomberg if nominating rules are reopened for amendment ahead of the July convention. Some DNC members who are concerned about the polling support of Senator Bernie Sanders have discussed reversing rule changes, limiting the power of superdelegates that were put in place after the 2016 election, according to a report from Politico. Those discussions have been sharply rebuked by DNC leadership. Michael Nutter, the former mayor of Philadelphia, who is a member of the Standing Rules and Bylaws Committee, was selected by Bloomberg in December 2019 to serve as his campaign's national political chair. Nutter was nominated by former DNC chair Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz in 2013 and he has served on the Rules Committee since 2017. You can't make this stuff up. Alexandra Rucker, a Rules Committee member and superdelegate from California, was hired as a senior advisor to Bloomberg campaign last month. Rucker, who was previously a lobbyist for the Communications Workers of America, is a vice chair of the California Democratic Party. Besides Nutter, just one other member of the 32-member Standing Rules and Bylaws Committee is affiliated with a presidential campaign, according to a sludge review of the roster as of September 18, 2019. Jeff Berman, a DNC member from Washington, D.C., joined Tom Steyer's campaign as an advisor in January. So there are members of the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee that are associated with campaigns, and it is both campaigns for billionaires. I think that Rashida Tlaib had the best response. She tweeted out, In law school, they call this a conflict of interest. Exactly. I just, I mean, I don't know what to say about this. You would think that the DNC, after 2016, embarrassed themselves, being openly corrupt when their last DNC chair had to resign. You would think that they'd at least do a better job hiding the corruption. Like, nobody expected the corruption and conflicts of interest to dissipate. But I was naive enough to at least expect them to do a better job at hiding it, being less conspicuous. But nothing has changed at all. Nothing. They are out in the open, caping for billionaires, wearing on their sleeves who they support. It is Michael Bloomberg because they want that cash. And it's just, it's morally reprehensible. This is comical. Like, if we saw things like this taking place in, uh, in Venezuela, this type of cronyism and corruption, we would use this as justification to invade, outright invade. We would criticize other democracies for doing things like this. We would, you know, call out the oligarchs in Russia who do this and that authoritarianism. But the same people who would call that out, who have been screaming about Russia rigging the 2016 election for years now, this is what they're up to. It's comical. And honestly, as you can kind of tell by my reaction, I'm just at a loss. This isn't in any way surprising to me. It's just, I mean, what do you, what do you expect? What do you expect from them? Let's just recap what happened over the course of the last week. We have individuals in the DNC openly discussing the prospect of bringing back a sudden rules change, superdelegates, to steal the nomination from Bernie Sanders. You have the DNC changing the rules to benefit Mike Bloomberg. You have the Iowa caucus just 
I don't even know how to describe that situation. Them spiking a poll at the behest of uh, Pete Buttigieg from the Des Moines Register. They are just either pathetically incompetent or so corrupt that they are cartoonishly evil. But I mean, look, here's the thing. And what I want everyone to come away with is the sense of victory in spite of everything that we saw transpire over the week because they wouldn't be doing all of this. They wouldn't be going out of their way to find some alternative to Joe Biden, you know, <laughs> assuming he does fail, if they weren't shaken to the core at the movement that we have built over the last four years. They're worried, and they should be worried. Bernie Sanders is going to win New Hampshire. And guess what? Come Super Tuesday, they may be shitting themselves on national television. So, I mean, the fact that they're doing all of this out in the open tells us that they're scrambling quickly. And, you know, either they're not trying to hide it, but I think the issue is that they don't really have time to hide it. They just have to defeat Bernie Sanders somehow. So they're doing whatever they possibly can, using whatever institutional advantages that they have at their disposal to shut them down. But guess what? There comes a point in time where, you know, they try so hard and um, our movement is just too powerful for them to suppress. And I think that, you know, we've we've reached that tipping point. I honestly do. So, you know, uh, this isn't surprising to anybody. The corruption at this point, it is... Uh, it's just expected from the DNC, and the only comfort that I take in thinking about the DNC is knowing that when Bernie Sanders is elected president, he's going to clean fucking house and fire every single one of those ghouls, and if you're frustrated now, just think about how pleasant that's going to be when we see the headlines. All DNC dismissed. That's going to be great. Because the institution is rotten to its core. And if I'm Bernie Sanders, I might just dismantle the entire DNC and form an entirely new arm of the Democratic Party to uh, focus on elections and whatnot. Because that institution, it may just need to go. It may be too far gone. So whatever the result may be, um, we're going to beat their asses. They're afraid of us. And they should be. Because we pose an existential threat to them. Bernie poses an existential threat to them. And we're coming for their asses. And they better be worried. Work harder to rig it and try to hide it a little better. Because we're coming for you.